it's rolling. I hope it's uh, working properly. Ooh. Um, so um, uh, here I am at Stockholm Furniture Fair with uh, Nipa and Jonathan, uh, Doshe Levine. Do you say Doshe Levine or, or how do you pronounce Doshe. your license? Doshe. Uh, all right. All right. Oh, is that, uh, say, say, say it in your way because I, I hold the mic now. It's Doshi Levine. Yeah. Good. Um, you've been to Sweden a few times, haven't you, before? Yeah, our first uh, time to Sweden was working with uh, Bolon, the right. flooring company, right. with uh, Annika and Marie, and uh, um, that was a great experience, so we came back for more. <laughs> well, we, we, you're welcome back. Um, so um, you do very colorful design. How, how is that appreciated in Sweden? I wouldn't say we do colorful design. Actually, I think color is a very important part of our work and we use color where it's appropriate. So I think that, um, of course, Sweden and uh, Denmark and uh, Scandinavia has a very rich tradition of textiles or folk art. So I don't see color and Scandinavia or Sweden being opposed to each other. <laughs> um, but you're not working with any, except for the Bolon exhibition, the project you did, but you're not working with any Swedish um, companies yet are you? We're working with uh, I would say Scandinavian yeah. companies, uh, Hey, yeah. Quadrat mm, and um, I'm forgetting one I'm sure. The four, let the four letter one, Ikea? No? No, no, <laughs> no we're not. No. Would you if, if they called you? Would you work with Ikea? I think it really depends on um, if we could bring value yeah. to uh, Ikea and if Ikea could bring value to us. Right. So I think it's not a blanket yes or no. It mm. depends on the project and it depends on what they'd like us to do for them. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk more about design very soon. But let's talk about desserts and sweets. <laughs> I brought something and uh, automatically uh, you said, Jonathan, you said that, oh, uh, I like sweets, but I'm like, you like your sweets. What kind of sweets do you like then? I like a sweet called Kaju Barfi. It's an Indian sweet. It's um, confection confectionery. Um, it's made of cashew nut and condensed milk and uh, it comes in really uh, flat diamond shapes mm. and it has real silver uh, laid on the really? on the top. Yeah, and it's super tasty. Right. Yeah. And what about you? Do you have a sweet tooth? Actually, I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's funny because sugar doesn't really suit me. So um, I have stevia, I don't have sugar. So no sweets for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> but you made, you made a, a designed ice cream for one of those ice cream brands like a few years back, didn't you? Yeah. How was that when you don't have a sweet tooth? I mean, I think that for me, I, I like dessert. It's not that I don't like it. I think it's, um, uh, I think with the ice moon, it was also about a story yeah. about uh, Christmas and a voyage to the moon and, and the imagination that goes with it. And of course we love the fact that an ice cream is a molded product. Right. So we brought a lot of the technology of industrial design yeah. and craftsmanship to the making of the ice bomb right, right. and the layers inside. Mm -hmm. and, and Ice I cream is a material just like any other. It has its own properties, you know, it melts, you can't touch it when you're working with it. Mm -hmm. um, so it, mm -hmm. it, it was an interesting challenge, you know, to, to yeah. make. But do you cook a lot? Yes, yeah. more and more, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm especially fond of um, cooking Israeli food. Um, I make my own bread, um, spelt bread. I, I do it kind of uh, faithfully every two days. Um, I never look back from that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Do you cook? Actually, I have to admit I don't cook <laughs> because we have a fantastic uh, cook from okay. Goa who cooks delicious food for us every day. I. I am a good cook, but I don't cook in my daily life. The only contribution I make to the house every day is I make fresh vegetable and fruit juice for the family. Mm. So that's the limit to my cooking. But Nipper, you're, you're not, you don't say you, you, you don't cook, but it doesn't stop you criticizing um, <laughs> my, <laughs> my yes, cooking. Yes, I'm a very, very good critic. Um, you know, you have to be really, um, you, ha you have to have a strong, a strong heart, right. you know, to cook in my, in, in my house with uh, Nipper and my son Rahul. Mm who are my strongest uh, critics. Right. And I think I made some, I tried, was trying my Israeli cuisine <laughs> right. um, just a few days ago and right. uh, I, I put too much lemon in, in, in everything. And um, they and didn't, they told, uh, and they told me and yeah. spent the hour telling me. <laughs> <laughs> but of course I come from India, you know, where the culture of cooking is very strong. 
And I think you're very, from a very early age, you're really used to the nuances of flavor and you know whether something is right or not. And of course, we are not polite like the English, <laughs> you know. We say what we think, <laughs> especially when it comes to food. Right. So how English are you? I'm Scottish, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm British. I, I don't feel there should be a, a, a separation um, in, in the UK at all. Um, although I was born in Scotland and in the north of Scotland, Elgin. Um, and so, yeah, very, very much so, yeah. And you, how, how English or British are you then? Well, of course, you know, I was born and I grew up in India. Yeah. So it's a very, it is who I am. Uh, but now I've lived in the UK for almost 19 years. And I think with every passing year, I feel I become more reserved. <laughs> and yet, the more I live in the UK, the less... No, no evidence. <laughs> I, I, I don't corroborate that. <laughs> but I think, as I always say to Jonathan, the more you live in a country, the less you feel you know it. Mm. And I think I still feel that about the UK. The mm. more I live, the less I understand the English. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, um, you live together, you work together. Are you ever apart? Yeah, a lot, actually. I think even when we are working together, it's not that we are working together all mm -hmm. the time. You know, we draw, Jonathan's making things. So I think there's a real sense of individuality in our work, although mm. we are working together. Mm. And I think we've only known each other as designers because we met at the Royal College of Art. Mm. And our, the foundation of our friendship was collaborating and working together. Mm. So I think that kind of, the relationship came after, right. so to speak. Uh, and I don't know any different. So I think that, um, are we apart? Yes, Jonathan sails, I don't. He cycles, I don't. He does taekwondo, I don't. So uh, what do you do? Um, I sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you don't? No. I don't, no. <laughs> I try to accompany Nipper sometimes. I play the tabla, the Indian ah, yeah, yeah. drum. So uh, when Nipper will accept me, I will happily play for her and accompany her. Yeah. So I think that also when you do live and work together, I think what I love about working with Jonathan is that we spend the best time of our day together. Mm. And to, to work with your family also mm. means that you can be very brutally honest with each other and yet at the end of the day, your family. Mm. So I think I like that freedom mm. because you can imagine in design with two very strong designers working yeah. together. I think we don't have any ego mm. when we are working together, which I think is for me is really refreshing. I mean, it, it's not inevitable that when you spend 20 years working with someone, you become sort of one blob, you know, and you start thinking the same way. In fact, the opposites happen, you know, we really pursue our own interests um, and maintain our individuality that, um, you know, we've, we've um, and, and it'll happen, you know, during, during the time in the studio, I'll go off and make something, I'll be sculpting, I'll be using my hands and creating things, drawing with my hands, really. Um, through making uh, and Nipper will be drawing in her book and and um, thinking in a very different way about the same project mm -hmm. and it's only really when we come together and start discussing ideas that there's this kind of uh, uh, friction you know and creative um, sort of you know um, magic that happens I think when they, we converge um, so yeah we're very independent very um, individual but uh, uh, aligned I would mm -hmm. say in, 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 in what we desire right. Uh, and what we what we dream about, you know. But I also think that you know, working together, uh, it also as a woman and as a family gives you a lot of freedom because we also have a son. So I think that I love the fact that I work with my family because it also gives me freedom with my child and my time. And I think that we've really been able to balance that really well. I can say that we've truly found a balance between work life and home life. And I think they really complement each other. It helps that everything is close by as well. Um, so do you, do you have the studio in your house or do you have a studio like two hours away from your house or, or when we started we yeah. started our studio from our living room right. in Golders Green in London yeah. and then eventually managed to find this amazing industrial warehouse place in the center in the city of London and since then we've always lived in the city mm -hmm. and uh, we've managed to find a school for Rahul which is St Paul's Cathedral School very close by and then our studio is now in Columbia Road which is where the famous flower market oh, yeah, yeah. exists and we found a, a, a workshop there um, and we're above an amazing restaurant and you know there's a nice culture in that area so it's all quite close by and we and live in the Barbican yeah. so we don't yeah. live in our workspace mm. and when we stop work we finish work at yeah. 6 30 and that's it work yeah. finishes then because yeah. we go back home and I don't work 
at all. Right. Our attention no. is demanded, Jeez. you know, yeah. by our son. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't think of work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, because my cramps in my arm now for holding the microphone. It looks very light, but it's super heavy. No, that's right, I'll try. Oh, meanwhile, well, cannot uh, some of you, uh, one of you, uh, help me open this? We don't have to look at the brands. We don't have to do that. But I just want to open it so we can try it. These are, I mean, we like to try some Swedish sweets now since you're here now they're chocolates they're filled with them and and they're filled with sweet things they're like marshmallows but chocolate covered marshmallows <laughs> you look so skeptical the both of you like I'll try one yeah. so like mmm yay it's edible you don't die of it <laughs> do you want do you dare um, maybe later can I can I defer yeah. Yeah. keep save it for later mmm so now my arm is better and I have some more sugar. Yeah, I needed that. Yeah, exactly. Can we put yeah. this model Maybe textile? Yeah, I put it on the floor. No, 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 the textile. Ah, yeah, 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 oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Put it away. Yeah, we're opening tomorrow, so we need it to look fresh. It does look fresh. Yeah. No um, <laughs> yeah, no chocolates for tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Um, but um, I need to talk to you about, we talked about your family situation. I could ask you more because it's, it's something intriguing there, being a couple and working and... I could ask about rules. So what rules do you have? Like you mentioned that you stop working at 6.30. We don't have rules, actually. No. And I think that in some ways, for me, it's very natural. You know, I don't see our life very different from any other family, really. You know, we have a, we have a work life, we have a family life. And, um, and like I said, I don't know any different, you know. <laughs> Okay, well, let's skip the family part now. Let's talk about um, design, the design world, and it's changing everything. And you have a huge specter of way of working with, because you produce your own things, you work with galleries, and you work with mass-produced things. And now you, when you're working with hay, it's going to be like mass, mass, mass-produced things. Um, how do you, is it, how, how do you see this? How, do you, like, have a plan, or we want to... You know, I'm, I'm going to challenge you because I think yeah. we don't actually work with any mass producers. Yeah. I think for me, IKEA is a mass producer, not Hay. Hay is tiny. Yeah. You know, Moroso, Quadrat, right. all these are very, very small companies, yeah. really. Yeah. And all of them combine craftsmanship with industrial production. Yeah. So I think, in our, mm. in our view, maybe you think of Hay as mass, but Hay is yeah. not mass at all, right. in right. fact. And I think that... Um, when did we last check the numbers? <laughs> Maybe. No, what I mean is that... I understand. I totally understand what you mean. I totally understand what you mean. IKEA, IKEA is mass production and I, 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 hey, hey is not. Exactly. But I mean, um, but the but thing is... Relatively speaking, yes, of course, we are making our own limited edition lights, yeah. which are self-produced yeah. in the UK and uh, also, you know, collectors coming to us for right. these lights. I think what I love is I love the spectrum across the, the companies that we work with very carefully chosen, yeah. not left to chance, really. Mm. I think that uh, what I see as a thread is that all the companies that we work with are family-owned companies. Right. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. OK, so we have uh, two more minutes. Well, yeah, I know, yeah. Our 15 minutes are almost up. Talk about <coughs> our exhibition here at Stockholm. Is um, that yeah, but this is going to be a, a show that's going to be lasting for like hundreds of years. So, but yeah, we can absolutely talk about your exhibition here if you want to. <laughs> Am I allowed to cough? <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, <laughs> so Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan <on> the <laughs> yeah, the two minutes left, and, uh, and the hundreds of years. No. Um. So yeah, we're at Stockholm Furniture Fair, and you're doing an installation here with tons of arch and beautiful furniture pieces. So what is it? It's a replication of your studio. I read somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's right. I think when we were invited to be guest of honor here at Stockholm, I think we wanted to share the spirit of our studio with, uh, with the visitors. So it's almost as if, you know, we, we, the prototypes you see on the walls, the drawings, we kind of brought all those elements from our studio and brought them yeah. to expose our, our process. And I think that we really want people to um, have a kind of uh, deeper understanding and appreciation for, for design in general and our work uh, yeah. in, in particular. Um, yeah. I think what also for us, what we wanted to do was we wanted to make something which has almost the, the way the structure and the exhibition is built. It's like a giant mock-up, yeah. like the prototypes you will see in mm. the exhibition. Mm. And I think we also really wanted to move away from a very kind of refined or a slick interior feeling. I think we wanted the exhibition to reflect how we work in the studio, where we put wood patterns together with card, so you have stru structure and surface. And I think then you have this very translucent fabric right. on the portals, which has a lightness, which is our new textile for Quadrat. And I think there'll be lots of drawings. So what we are hoping is that visitors to the fair get a deeper understanding of design. Yeah. 